Hello and welcome to 5 Inch Floppy on GameArena.com.au, I'm Junglist. Last week we said 2012 would be the year that MMOs finally got a clue. Well, it'll also be known as the rise of Kickstarter in the games industry. It's a crowdfunding website that lets backers support projects in return for the final product, as well as added incentives. Its use recently has been made popular by Tim Schafer's Double Fine, skyrocketing past their target amount simply by saying they wanted to make a comical adventure game. But these days it seems like adventure games are almost a bit of a lost art form. They exist in our dreams and our memories and in Germany. It's a fantastic story, such as the power of Kickstarter. Some are hailing it as the anti-publisher, but others aren't so lucky. We wanted to find out, is it the anti-publisher only for those with a big name? So we found someone with more experience. We are joined, completely not live, completely not via satellite, by Ted Brown. Unlike Tim Schafer, he needs an introduction. But he's on the credits of such franchises as Tomb Raider, Army of Two, and Tony Hawk. As Walter Sobchak would say, not exactly a lightweight. And one fine day, he decided to go indie and make a game called Ninja Baseball. On paper, the team did everything right. They had industry experience. There was a tested prototype of the game. There was an entertaining video clearly explaining the idea. Folks, Ninja Baseball is a game. Uh, NinjaBaseball.com out in 2011. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'll be out here eating this. So uh, take care. Thanks, guys. It's an iPad, Dad. It's it's a, it's a, it's a metaphor. metaphor. It's a metaphor, Tim. It's, it's still tasty. Oh, okay. It even had ninjas. Yet for some reason, Ninja Baseball joined a slew of games that made all the right choices, yet still didn't make their modest asking amount. I think that when you come up with uh, something that's new and different, and I don't want to say original because it is derivative in a lot of respects, it was still something you couldn't really visualize um, so we were looking at it. And the stuff we did have was very alpha, very temp. It's sort of like if you were a game developer, you'd be like, yeah, okay, cool, they've got a temp model and they're moving around. If you're a potentially an investor, you're like, oh, that's a warning, that's a red flag for me. Like, they don't even have a model in the game. The bottom line is we didn't show, we didn't show it. And I think that that causes a bit of fear. I think that, I mean, the people who did sign on were incredibly enthusiastic. They, they fell in love with the idea, which was my goal. Um, and, but the people who either saw it and held back were probably just, you know, wary, and maybe rightfully so. I mean, they, we didn't prove that we could do it. Even though I knew, I knew we could do it, even though we did it later, um, that isn't, you know, that's not enough to make people spend 25 bucks, so. Is it fair that, you know, people who spent 15 years in the industry can just say, cool, I wanna make a game? Totally, that's awesome. Um, and then there are students who are still in college who are like, I have this dream of this game that doesn't exist. We've never seen something like it and we wanna make it. And it happens. Does that, is it amazing? That's amazing, that couldn't happen otherwise. I, I'm not happy that it didn't work. I'm not surprised though. Um, you know, it was just, it was off the, it was off the wall. Like most of the stuff, around the time that I, we submitted Ninja Baseball, it was Swords and Sorcery. It was Guns in Space. And that was like, that was it. It was all extremely derivative, just, just crap, right? The question for me still is, is Ninja Baseball simply not a viable idea? Or was it a problem of uh, they just not communicate the idea well enough? It seems a troubling amount of game Kickstarters aren't communicating their idea well enough. Or maybe the public just isn't listening. There's your occasional fairy tale story, but with 44% of all Kickstarter projects getting funded, the average for gaming projects sits lower at 39%. With a total of $27 million pledged to gaming projects so far, it's not enough to make any publishers worry. But the fact that projects are being funded at all highlights a disconnect between what we want and what publishers think we want. But perhaps not as different as we might think. Some publishers ask developers for a vertical slice during game development. This is to give them an idea of what the game's like and ease their minds about the millions they're spending. Trouble is, that's not really how game development works. There's layers to it. You have to build and test the concept start making the engine and art assets, and then tweak the gameplay. Sometimes you won't even know if a game is fun until the later stages of the project. It's not like you can just say, here's one I prepared earlier. So diverting resources to a vertical slice can actually hinder a game's development. 
And if the Kickstarter community is only interested in backing established names and wants to see a game before it's complete, then how is that any different than a publisher? Uh, Randy Pitchford, the president of Gearbox, he, I was at an IGDA meeting, and this is something he said I've never forgotten. He said that a game is a promise. You know, if you have, you know, two swords, two swords and a gun crossed on the box cover, and you play it, it's, in a, it's a conversation game. Like, you're like, what the, the bleep? Like, right, that's just not, that's the game promised me swords, you know, cutlery. You know, I want to chop stuff, I want to shoot stuff. Um, you look at look at Tim Schafer. They didn't. They haven't even designed the game yet, right? And they they got through because the promise is it's an adventure game that will make you laugh, right? That's that's what people buy. You give something new. It takes. There's a lot of inertia there, um, and that's 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 a problem. Anytime you come up with something fresh and original, that's always a problem. Is how do you overcome that? Um, how do you get noticed? How do you get traction? How do you know? You know I. I used to think it was ridiculous that people, that marketing would come out with a game, you know, with the marketing materials months before the game was available. If I saw a game that I wanted, I wanted to buy it then. I didn't want to, you know, put my put this thing on a schedule, you know, and, and buy, I wanted to buy it right now. Um, what I came to appreciate is that, you know, I was already in, but the people on the fence, they need time to be exposed to the idea, come back to it, and now that's comfortable, they're okay with buying it. They're not okay with making an impulse purchase of something that they're not comfortable with. And this idea of exposure over time um, is very viable. So is it what people want? Sure. And that's why you see, you know, fantasy and sci-fi winning the day. Um, and then of course the wacky German inspired board games, which is their own sort of sub thing. But um, if you come up with something like, if you come up with something extremely fresh and original, like if you're playing some of the Ludum Dare games, they're amazing, and they would never sell because they're the the what what they're promising, what they're selling you is something that you didn't know you wanted, and so you're not probably not going to spend five bucks to find out. Part of the problem is no matter how much you know about coding or art, you're still running a business, and some developers, perhaps intentionally, neglect the business side of things. Certainly, getting your partnership contracts in check and your marketing plan isn't exactly the highlight of indie development. Hey, man, helping indie out? Please, you'd probably blow it all on middleware solutions. But these things can't be ignored. For example, amongst other unforeseen startup costs, developers might be unaware how much of their Kickstarter money has to instantly be paid to tax. So maybe the problem is one of business education. Hey, hey, I'll put a picture of you in the game. You know, being a game developer is an expensive endeavor. Um, you know, I bought a new computer and all this without, you know, without, you know, I'd, I'd quit my job. So at this point it was just sunk, you know, investments. Um, but uh, I mean, it's getting easier and easier now. You know, and with Unity and with tools becoming, lowering the bar more and more, and with more and more people kind of coming of age with video games, not only in their blood, but also computers and social media. Um, and if you look at, I use Ludum Dare as sort of a barometer. You know, 800 games last time, just recently, and then they jumped to 1,400 games submitted, made in 48 hours by a single person. Not not the jam, just the, the competition. Um, and part of me wonders, you know, and so like, let's say that if 10% of those people decide to make it to a Kickstarter campaign, that's, that's another 140 game project. Like I think that we're getting to a point where, um, I mean, Kickstarter, I think Kickstarter is hitting a, maybe hitting like an apex like right now, an apogee right now, where, um, you're soon you're gonna stop being able to, you know, all the big names are, you know, slowly have come online, but after you get past that, once you get past the, the heavy hitters, you're gonna have this sort of um, cottage industry of people making games for themselves. So you're saying eventually the development community will be large enough to support itself? Yes. I mean, again, there are only so many types of games um, out there. Kickstarter also hands power to the press. And with that power comes the responsibility of not just bringing eyeballs to the games with zombies and dinosaurs in them, but what looks credible and well-conceived. Thankfully, trustworthy sites like Rock, Paper, Shotgun have risen to that challenge. Our massive thanks to Ted Brown for his time and generosity, even if he did use the word emergent. I said emergent, didn't I? Oh, I meant to say organic. Oh, wait, no. 
<laughs> and keep an eye out for Ninja Baseball. Ted promises us he'll slay that demon eventually. In the meantime, if you want to keep up to date with his projects, his current company is Organic. And because the most anticipated titles of this year have been pushed back to 2013, that might force some outlets to focus more on indie development, whether they like it or not. In the meantime, there's still plenty of good games to cover, big ones like Far Cry 3, and little indie sluggers like Natural Selection 2 punching above their weight. We'll be there to cover it all. But because July is a bit of a quiet month for games, we'll be taking a bit of a break. We'll be back on August 3rd. In the meantime, floppy fans, we'll see you on the battlefield.